Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thanks for joining us here. Um, <clears throat> I hope everybody I mean, everybody had a wonderful, safe, and happy Christmas. And I hope Santa brought you all those things that you were hoping you'd get. And if not, quit being naughty, and maybe next year you'll get it. So, you got to be nice. You got to be nice. So... We are going to get back on this 2004 Johnson 30 horsepower two-stroke makeover. Um, we're taking a lot of parts off an 89 donor. Whether all this mix mash stuff is going to work, I will. I don't know. We just have to see. But we're going to get to some of the electrical portions on here getting a, uh, a rectifier hooked up a little backup we got us a 89 flywheel that had tiffiness tufuses for the um, starter we got us a starter just kind of in there we put an 89 carb that's solid aluminum that don't have the plastica top um, and now it's time to get to hooking up some wires and rectifiers and starter buttons, stopper buttons, button, button, buttons. So we got to get that going. So let's get to it. Here's another little hack for you. Okay, when you're going back up with that starter, these little riser clamps can be a pain. Take you a little Vaseline, shoot it all over the back of it like that. Take the old petroleum jelly on us, stick it there. The other one wraps around the front of it. So stick it in there like that. Then come around the back of that. It'll stick there for you. Okay. Um, now what I did was went around and loosened these Phillips screws on here. And then, if you're going back on with this plate, you might want to put a couple marks, you know, um, which screws, because some of them don't have, not all of them have screws in there. And, uh, so, After you drop that down, before you drop it down or whatever, you might want to just take your paint pen and Sharpie or whatever and make you a marker. So if you're going to be going back on with it there. So I've got it marked there and there and just some reference marks. Um, you don't have to, but so I undid those Phillips screws and then it lifts right off of there. Okay, so there is everything we need for the most part on this one. And then what I'm going to do so that you can see the order and all that is I will go out in the bone pile in my conics, see if I can find the little bus bar there that everything screws to. Then we'll use Sharpies and paint markers and thingies and mark everything. And uh, then this one already has all the stuff under the flywheel, so I won't have to pull that flywheel back off. But I will have to cut, do some splicing on the wires and stuff and mount the rectifier and yada yada. All that stuff. All that stuff. So let's get doing it. Okay. 
I went out to the Conics there and got a few things for this. Okay, here is the unit that we took off of the 89. Okay, this is your AC charge coil right here. You can see it's a bigger affair with just the one big thick black plastic, two screws. That has the brown and brown yellow wire going to the power pack and then onto the coils. That's what that one does. This, you can see with the two different types, this is your AC charge coil that's going to the rectifier. Okay, so out of this one you've got a brown and a brown yellow wire. Out of this one you're going to have a yellow with a blue stripe, a yellow with a gray stripe, and a yellow. Alright. This is your sensor or trigger. This will have a black with a white stripe and a black. Alright, and they all get pinched up under this thing right here. You can see them here. There's the three, there's the two, brown, brown, yellow, and then there's the white with a black stripe and black with a white stripe. Go to the sensor. Okay, so that's the setup. That's everything that comes out from under there. Alright, and then it's going to go to the rectifier. I took paint pens and marked these. So, the red is going to be your hot from the rectifier and if you have a neutral safety switch on there it will generally be red with a yellow stripe and it will go here as well. Most generally anything red or anything with red with a yellow stripe is hot. Then you've got coming from the rectifier and coming from the AC charge coil for the rectifier you've got a yellow wire with a blue stripe right there. Then coming from the rectifier and also coming from the AC charge coil you've got a yellow with a gray stripe. Also you have a yellow and a gray stripe coming from the rectifier. They go there. Then you've got a yellow coming from the rectifier and a yellow coming from the AC charge coil. They go there. The rectifier here must be grounded. The body has to be grounded. That is your charge setup and even though these are dirty and you can't see them I'm going to show them the, the colors of the wires on the rectifier are dirty. I'll show you how they come. Okay, here's one with just the rectifier and the AC charge coil that's taken off the mag plate. So here, I cleaned them up as best I could. You can see clearly there's a yellow with a blue stripe. And faintly, <laughs> right in here, you can see right there, yellow with a gray stripe. Sort of. Let's see if I can find it better down here somewhere. Not really. Right there's a little bit of gray too. So you have to look close. And these are going to be enclosed in a, a, a an abrasion resistant plastic cover. Alright, and then the last one you've got is just plain yellow. You will have the same set of wires coming off the rectifier. And I can show you that probably a little better but you can see you've got your red going to your hot I can't tell there's the red and blue 
and I believe that's yellow with the boy it's hard to tell on here that's the yellow with the gray stripe that's the yellow Let's see if we can see them any better on this end no but here we can see I took if you notice they got big blobs of epoxy at all the wire coils they put where the wires splice into the windings they put big blobs of epoxy to keep them nice and protected and everything okay that's what this is and what it looks like I remove you can see there's epoxy here and epoxy here I removed the two big clumps of epoxy here so you can see from the charge coil you've got a yellow with a blue stripe yellow with a gray stripe right there you can actually see the gray pretty good and then it jumps the yellow with the gray stripe just jumps between the two windings here then you've got the plain yellow on this far end so that's what it all looks like if you take the epoxy off there you can see this is just a jumper between the two windings that is the yellow with the gray stripe so for hooking it all up that's how it goes and I'll grab a manual and I'll show you this setup via the manual too but right there you can see the rectifier and the little bus bar here and you can see I've got it marked red yellow with a blue stripe yellow with a gray stripe and yellow and that's your setup these two holes mount the whole thing to the block and essentially all you're doing is splicing these wires together so let me grab a manual and I'm sure I have that same setup in there so there it is you can pause that there's your red there's your red there's your yellow with the blue stripe yellow with the gray stripe yellow yellow on yellow and then here it is coming from the mag plate you've got your yellow yellow gray yellow blue the red comes off the rectifier so that's the step we're going to do next is hook all this up to the engine then we'll get into the starter switch here a couple other things you know you got your battery terminals coming in which I got to get a good set of yet the ones that were on this motor they probably work but they're all hard and stiff but you can pause that whatever you need to there's your rectifier there's your bar and there's your mag plate all of it that's how it ties in I'll be back Okay, so here's my bus bar, and I got it marked red, yellow blue, yellow gray, and yellow. Here's my wires coming from out from under the mag plate. So let's move the red away. So from the rectifier. Here's my yellow blue. Then we will put from the mag the yellow blue. And it will go right back in there. Let me get my screwdriver. Need my screwdriver. So taking the yellow blue from both the mag plate and the rectifier. I've marked, I've painted these wires up 
so you can see yellow blue get my hot screwed in and then it'll clear up a little for you I hope okay so we've got yellow blue to yellow blue from the rectifier okay now there's my yellow gray coming from the mag plate and you can see some gray right there there's my yellow gray coming from the rectifier yellow gray to yellow gray okay yellow gray from the rectifier to yellow gray coming from the mag now here's just the plain yellow here's the plain yellow coming from the rectifier okay yellow to yellow There you go. Hopefully that's a pretty decent shot right there. You can see the rectifier. You can see yellow right here. Solid yellow to yellow. You can see yellow gray. You can just make out the gray. Go into yellow gray up here. Yellow blue, yellow blue, hot. Now I'll have to pull these two screws off and tuck the rectifier in that hole right there so I will do that and be back now if you look on the uh, 89 here we've got a couple of holes here and here this one's just about three-quarter inches right here and that's where the start switch was on this one so looking uh, I don't know I don't remember what this was for You know what? If I remember right, he had his yeah. That's what that's what he had going through there. He had the uh, battery terminals going through there. The, yeah, that's where he had those going through. Yep, his battery terminals went through that one, and I think there was a rubber grommet there too. And then this is for the start switch, and the kill switch is out on the end of the handle. So, now looking at the at the 2004, there ain't no hole here. So I'm going to have to drill one. My shift handle, I took it off. It'll, boy, get that back over here. So it's going to be there. That'll be reversed. Yeah, no, there'll be plenty of room in there. So I'll drill that right about there. So I got one of these step bits here, and it only goes up to three quarter inches. So we're going to put it right there. I can get in there, I think. That's about where I want it. Maybe a little lower. There's a hole. And let's see if it's going to accept this, or do I need to make it a little bigger? Looky there. So that'll be my start button. Push, push, start, start, stop, stop. All right. So. What I do with the nut? What I do with the nut? Well, I'll find it. 
I find it. But uh, that's going to be my start button. i got to find the uh, little plastic nut. I'll be back. Okay. Here's your battery terminals coming in. Here's your negative. It grounds right there to the block. That's your negative battery terminal. I've got my positive looped around and it comes up here and it goes to there. The upper solenoid main post. That's your battery. Your positive from the battery. Okay. Then I've got the start switch. It comes in. This is it here. This is your starter switch. Okay, you can see I've got the red going to the large lug, upper lug, along with the battery positive coming in from the battery. So those two are right there. The yellow red going to the starter switch, I have to the upper small solenoid post. Okay, then I have a ground going from the lower solenoid post to right there. That ground wire right there. Ground's right there. And I'll explain why I had to do that. Okay, now you've got a positive wire coming from the rectifier over there. And it goes to the upper large lug of the solenoid. The only wire coming from the lower large lug of the solenoid is the continuation of the big heavy positive terminal. It goes under the starter and then goes right there to the starter. That just goes from there to the lower post on the solenoid. So you can take a, a look at that. That's how I got those set up. Now let's look at the other side. Okay. You can see here's the wire coming over there from the large post of the solenoid positive. I've just got it run under the fuel pump and to the positive here where it connects with the positive coming off the rectifier. So there's that one, there's that one. They both hook to the positive. Then like we talked before I've got the blue, two blue and yellows, one from the mag plate and one from the rectifier. Here you've got the two yellow with gray, one from the rectifier, one from the mag plate. Here you've got yellow and yellow, one from the rectifier, one from the mag plate. Now, the reason why I had to put that ground over there to the other lug, smaller lug of the solenoid is because I did not put in the neutral safety switch which goes to ground. Okay, you can see there's my battery and my multimeter and you can see it's reading zero and we'll take ooh, the positive and put on the positive, negative on the negative you can see it goes up to 12.5 volts DC. We'll start the motor. Let me squeeze the bulbs. Squeeze the bulbs, squeeze the bulbs. There we go. Primer. Some wet. Sure, she's in neutral.
put these back on the back breath. open there now you ain't gonna believe this if I tell you you ain't gonna believe it you can look it up on that inner tube we went from single digit temperatures down around you know like four five six something like that and two nights ago midnight I walked outside looked at my manual my mercury thermometer the old thermometer because I wasn't believing what I saw on my digital inside I come out there and looked at that thing 60 degrees at midnight and then it went on the next day to go up to 65 degrees in December. So we went from like four, four to six degrees to 65 degrees. They said it broke every December record for being warm here since records were kept. It was nice, melted all that snow. It was nice. I ain't making it up. think I did a real good job doing that. So I got to do some video etching. I'm going to etch you. But I'm going to try and show you why I did what I did and why you got to did it. Because if you don't did this, you, you, well, it ain't going to work. Let me see. I think I'm zoomed in probably too much. Okay. Now, let me put my little fluky away. I turned it off. I did indeed. Okay. And the screw. Looks like a fuel pump screw. Okay. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and use my test light because it has a printer on it and I want to print something out. Alright, let's get this over here. Now, let me get you just a little bit there. I guess I should have left you zoomed a little bit, right? Right about there is probably about the best I'm gonna be able to do. All right, let me cut this off. Right. Noise box. All right, now, I showed you the different wires coming off this bus bar here. That's, I don't know what they call these things. That's just what I'm gonna call it. Call it, you know, Alfred if you want. I, this bar here with the, you know, with you, you know, the connectors. Okay, and then up here is a solenoid. And if you look, you say, well, I don't see no wires going to ground. I see red, yellow, I see red, yellow, I see red, all positive stuff coming from that solenoid. But on mine, I ran, I can't remember, it's either from there to the block or from there to block, depending on which way you have these wires hooked up, all these positive, it really don't matter. It's just a switch. So th these could be over here and those could be over there. It don't really matter. Whatever you know, is the easiest routing of the wires themselves. But if you notice, I ain't got no, I got no grounds anywhere on that solenoid, but on mine, I put a ground from like here to the block. But you can see you got a positive 
red yellow wire coming here. Well, if we follow that wire, it comes down. Here's the red yellow here. Here's the red yellow here. And if you look, it comes to this switch, the neutral start switch, safety start switch, neutral safety switch. How about a how about how about ho? They got a you know a bunch of names for it. But um, right there, see that? There's the ground. And to complete a positive negative circuit in a switch, whether it be this switch or the solenoid, which is an electric switch, you have to have the complete circuit. In other words, you have to have positive and a negative. So I just ran a negative from here to the block because I'm not using this switch. Here is that switch. Now this switch you can see, maybe see that's a red yellow or a yellow with a red stripe there it is right there okay see it would come down there it is again right there red yellow and when that's in the open position hang on for a minute excuse me when that yeah when that's in the open position you would have a ground. It would be no different than going from here to the block. From here to the block. There it is. Now, if you tried to put it in gear, it pushes a button and it takes away the ground. And when it takes away the ground, you don't have a complete circuit. So when you push the starter button, nothing will happen. And I don't like these switches. This is my motor, so I can do what I want. But that would be your ground. If you look at this coming here, on the back side of the switch, where it bolts in, sorry, where it bolts in, that's all grounded. And then when you push the button, it opens the ground, so it's no longer grounded. That button there. And then your circuit's not complete, so you can push the starter button all you want, and it ain't going to do anything. So, the reason why I like to get rid of that on this particular motor is because it has a mechanical safety interlock. You can still, you can start it in gear with the mechanical, I believe, but you can't throttle up because there's a mechanical uh, spring-loaded riser that blocks the magneto plate from advancing. I hope this is making sense. <laughs> Um, it's late, I'm tired, uh, I believe. Um, but anyway, hopefully I explained it well enough, and that's that. Um, well, we got an electric start, we've got a recoil start. We've got a charging system that is charging on the good with our rectifier. Um, now, one other thing you might, and I, for all you truly um, electronic people, um, I'm not going to go <laughs> diving into uh electric theory and stuff um i will just throw this out you wonder if i'm raising that motor and the voltage is coming up to 16 volts or even more wouldn't that overcharge a battery well without going into the bilges on this thing the word rectifier or rectify means correct and it's my understanding from reading and, and researching what happens is if you've got a four or five hundred cranking amp battery, 12 volt battery, and it's a little bit low, the rectifier will send the charge down the terminals. Well, the whole system will. It will send it to the battery and it has a way of correcting over voltage in theory um, they do go bad and they do overcharge batteries it happens um, 
but the the theory is that as the charge comes into the battery and like I said you're you know if you've got like a four to six hundred cranking amp battery it's gonna take that little rectifier and that that voltage that DC voltage a long time hours of running to, to, to overcharge that large volume of cranking amps and what will happen in theory is as the two equalize it will somehow inside that rectifier are diodes and and capacitors I'm trying to think of the word I'm resistors um, and it will kind of backflow it to stop it from the voltage in the rectifier will actually start to decrease is my understanding but like I said it would take a lot of hours hours and hours uh, for it to reach that point on a healthy crank and amp battery is my understanding so I've always done them this way I've never had a problem it always charges my battery really good runs my fish finder and radio and GPS whatever else you got out there um, and that's the way I've always done it I've never had any problem with overcharging a battery so it uh, is putting out good and I hit my button and it starts I hit my button and it stops it shifts a piece all I got left is some transom clamps and cosmetics so I hope you enjoyed this journey along um, this whole system I did would be the same all the way from an 18 horsepower tiller up to a 35 tiller. Once you get into 40, it changes a little bit, uh, depending on the year of the 40 and, and model and so forth. Um, there are a few more things once you add remote. If you add uh, remote start and everything up at a console, there's a couple other things you're gonna you're gonna have to overcome. But for your straightforward. I want my tiller motor to charge my battery and have electric start. This is how I do it. So maybe other ways this has always worked for me. So I'm going to keep on doing it that way. So this one's getting a little long. As always, that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.